Hey, we're back with another episode of Before You Buy, that show where we give you some straight up gameplay and our first impressions of the latest games releasing. We've been playing Helldivers 2 since it launched. Uh, this is from Sony and Arrowhead Game Studios, the developers of the original game, Held, uh, the original Helldivers. This is a departure from the first game's top down twin stick gameplay. This is a fully 3D third person run and gun shooter. Uh, Helldivers 2 is an over-the-top, fun, simple shooter that we've only scratched the surface of progressing through everything, but it has been an absolute blast. The game has the fun factor for sure. Uh, it's part like Starship Troopers, part Terminator, part Earth Defense Force, and it's a perfect recipe for just shooting and exploding everything with your friends online. Uh, the game has uh, had a bit of a rough launch, though. I will say that we got beautiful. We got booted a few times. Uh, we had a few crashes. Uh, Steam reviews are reflecting that. We're hoping these issues get fixed and ironed out quickly because beneath it is, like I said, a really simple, fun time. It's on PC and PS5 for 40 US dollars. And uh, when you jump in, you go through this brief, funny tutorial. And then from there, you set up your character and your ship. The bridge of your ship serves as kind of like the hub for you to upgrade your ship, uh, weapons and equipment, and jump into game modes through this big galaxy map. Now, in this game, you're a citizen and a soldier of Super Earth that is uh, out in the galaxy fighting against enemies that threaten freedom and democracy. Uh, the enemies are just kind of like giant bugs and robots. <laughs> the, the tone in the game is great. It's like a funny, satirical take on over-the-top futuristic patriotism, very similar to Paul Verhoeven's Starship Troopers, like one of my all-time favorites. And here, it absolutely nails it in the dialogue and the random text you find, uh, character chatting, and even the name of your ship. Uh, you can pick and combine words to make silly ship names like mine, uh, the prophet of patriotism. So when you're on your goofy name ship, you access that galaxy map I mentioned and you jump to planets to drop into and do missions. Uh, all the planets kind of have their own score, like a community score where uh, all players online collectively are beating back the enemy forces and essentially capturing that planet. Jumping into the missions on these planets, it's usually a main objective that may have a few other things to accomplish. And then uh, if you wander, you can find a sub objective to take on uh, and even find some points of interest with extra collectibles and secrets. Main objectives are usually pretty simple, like, you know, turn on a radio tower or defend a location or kill X amount of enemies or destroy their nests. But the further you get in and the harder missions you take on, the cooler stuff you'll see, like objectives and enemy type differences and stuff. Now, I still don't know the extent of the variety, really, as, uh, you know, this is only first impressions. But what I can say is that matches are perfectly paced. Some can wrap up in just a couple of minutes minutes, uh, but more can take like 30 minutes or so and feel grueling and challenging, but in a good way. You know, like a desperate long push across a big map, your teammates constantly dying, only to get to the evac point at the last minute and get in and win and get a good ranking. That can be really satisfying. Plus, the game does a really good job of ranking and tracking your performance, uh, your kills, your stats, uh, the way it rewards you at the end of a mission, all that stuff is pretty good. But it's the gameplay, man. Gameplay is simple, but it feels really great. You run and gun, you aim down sights, uh, you can even view in first person, you can sprint, crouch, or go prone, uh, and they all have their own use cases. You can also dive onto the ground, and then in Max Payne style, or Resident Evil 6 style, uh, you can have like 360 degree movement while laying on the ground to shoot stuff before standing up. And the guns feel really solid with good responsive feedback, uh, a manageable amount of recoil, and some nice aggressive punchy sound. Weapons are not upgradable or customizable from what I can see, which is a bit disappointing, but you do work your way towards new weapons. The grind seems to be a bit long for the weapons in particular, but it's a bit early for me to judge. Still, 
there are a lot of weapons and they're good. You know, a giant laser cannon, anti-tank missiles, submachine guns, heavy machine guns, full auto pistols, futuristic shotguns, energy weapons, a pretty dangerous flamethrower, and a bunch more. Uh, your other bit of weapons is actually the ordnance that you can call in on the fly. You complete missions and explore to find currency that lets you unlock more of these as you go. So what starts with like a supply drop and a simple orbital strike later ends up being bombing runs, nukes, napalm, EMPs, and more. And then for supply drops, you can get bigger, heavier weapons that like require two people to operate. Uh, there, there are turrets, there are automated defenses, mines, and uh, just a bunch of other things to keep the hordes from coming. Now you are mowing down hordes and hordes of pretty challenging enemies that can kill you in a couple hits uh, with cool weapons and uh, the gore and destruction really help sell things. Uh, gut spray everywhere, fire burns, shells of bugs are blasted off and fly into the air, exposing their weak spots. Uh, some small buildings explode, and all of it just makes for satisfying chaos that didn't really get old for the groups that I've been playing with. Uh, also, uh, friendly fire is on, meaning that there's a lot of funny, ridiculous stuff that can happen as your gourd body can like fly across the map thanks to your friend accidentally drone striking you. There's a lot of experimentation. Every time you get a new weapon, you're like, what's the range on this? What's gonna happen if I call this? And usually it results in you murdering one of your friends. But the way it's done, it's really funny. Like the sandbox freedom approach to weapon and encounters and just the way the characters move and dive around and animate just make for some really really funny laugh out loud moments as like all players inevitably will make mistakes and it's all challenging and fun my only complaint is that uh, like when you get cornered by a bunch of enemies your options are pretty limited and it can feel a little bit jacked up you know you have like a weak melee attack and that's it in reality, you are a helpless, expendable soldier, but playing it sometimes, I wish I had a few more tools at my disposal, like a jump button. I want more verticality to these battles. Uh, there is a jetpack that definitely does help with that. Uh, but really, when you're on the ground, you can only vault over stuff and climb up a select few bits of things. It can be a bit frustrating. The jetpack solves some of that, but I, I just wish there were some more options. Also, uh, be warned, the game does have microtransactions. It's a co-op multiplayer game, no real PVP. I kind of expected something like this, but you do have two battle pass style progression things to work through, uh, a free battle pass and a paid battle pass. Thankfully, the free one seems more generous and longer than the paid one, but the paid one does have a couple of cool elemental weapons. I, I wish weren't locked behind that type of thing. Still, the currencies are fairly generous, including one that you can earn on missions that you can also buy via more microtransactions for a few bucks. And I don't like that stuff at all. I've been very clear on this for many years now on the record. I especially don't like these type of microtransactions when it's in a game that isn't free to play. I paid $40 for this, so I had to note that. Still, this is a pretty good battle pass and progression that seems paced fairly well. Uh, besides, like I said earlier, it takes a bit of time to get to the more weapons, uh, but like armor and helmets and, and, and banners are all pretty awesomely designed, really nailing the tone they're going for, and uh, they actually feel worthwhile to get. I, I wanna look cooler than my friends. Uh, one thing I will say, I, I strongly feel this game is much better with a group of friends. If you're matchmaking with randoms, that's okay, but communication really helps. And if you're trying to play it completely solo, I don't recommend that. Uh, this pains me to say that as a solo gamer, you know, I, I really think some people might disagree with me here, but I just didn't find this game anywhere near as fun on my own, uh, especially specifically because it feels like combat is designed around having others watching your back. You know, enemies swarm you on all sides and the indicators from where you're getting attacked aren't always the greatest, depending on your equipment. Uh, you need that three or four man team to really feel like effective killing machines. I'm just going on feel, you know, especially because I do tend to be a solo gamer. This is a significantly bigger blast with friends. Uh, it also does some fun little creative things like uh, directional inputs, almost like little cheat code inputs you have to input in order to call down your ordinance. So like, you know, bugs are on your tail and you're trying to call in a nuke for them and you're frantically trying to be like, oh, left, right, left, right, left, right, up, down. 
You know, that type of thing. You can also use this input method for activating terminals and stuff during missions. So you might be getting swarmed by creatures as your friends are trying to defend you and you're frantically just trying to type up, right, left, down, right, like into a computer without getting your head chopped off. It's really creative and tense and it works perfectly. More games should have this style of little input mini game thing. Uh, that and the game has a really impressive on the fly map. I want to commend them for this. Like in a really challenging twist, you have to manually bring the map up. You can't really see it on the bottom right always when you're running and gunning. So one player will usually help navigate, but the map and the tagging and how it works and you can use the dual sense like the little touchpad. It's all really slick. It's easy to navigate, even when you're sprinting. Uh, it's just very nicely done, nicely implemented. Uh, like I said, there are server issues and some real hard crashes I had, but underneath that, there is something here that just feels polished all around. Now, overall with this game, I don't know how long I'll end up playing this, you know, it might be a fun weekend or two and I burn out. Or I'm hooked for the long term, I'm not sure yet, but it's a lot of fun, especially, especially for Starship Troopers fans. I know there are Starship Troopers games out there, but this one just nails the feel. It needs more, you know, more mission types, vehicles, crazier stuff. I think it will get that over time. The support structure is there. If you don't get to this game right away, that's fine, but I do think you should consider playing it with some buddies at some point or another. Also, I just love a good third-person shooter. Bring more of those. Third-person shooters with hip-fire mechanics. Always good, they'll always get me. But uh, this is a before you buy. You know how this goes by now. We give you some pros, some cons, and some personal opinions. And now I wanna hear yours down in the comments. You got some first impressions on this one like us? Maybe you got further than us. Maybe you just started. Would love to hear what you're thinking about Helldivers too. You know, I didn't have time to go into like the armor attributes and those types of perks and stuff. So anything at all you're thinking down in the comments, let us know. And if this video helped you, you know, seeing some gameplay and hearing a guy talk about it, clicking the like button does help us. We would really appreciate that. That's it though. Uh, as always, thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time.